It was a birthday present, which uh, was my 16th birthday. And um, for the, the birthday present of my dad, he, he bought me a membership for the YM, which I think in them days was around about one pound ten shilling. Oh, what was a great to, present. Yeah. <laughs> what a deal and I said, there. bloody hell, I said. And then he said, I want you to join a club. I said, I used to be in the boys' brigade and one or two other things. Yeah. So the YM's a good mob, he said, I think you should get me there. And I've been in my bed ever since. Best thing you ever did. Correct. Yeah. Although I'd been in earlier when I came first of all in 1959, but I didn't, I didn't take up membership. Um, uh, I was serving my apprenticeship in town and I used to pop in and I only used to come in on a Saturday for the judo and l later I joined the wrestling club and, and sort of it, you know, became a fuller member and got engaged in all the activities then, you know, and all the um, fellowships and friendships, you know. Well, my brother was a, uh, he got demobbed out of the army and he used to do a little bit of wrestling before he went in the army. And then when he come home, he joined the YMCA again and he started wrestling. And I started watching him and I think they were short and they asked me to have a go and he had a go and I never looked back. Now, I joined the YMCA when I was 14, but I'd actually been allowed to come into the YMCA when I was 12. In those days, back in the 60s, um, there wasn't a junior section during the week, but the physical director uh, had a son, he was about 14, and uh, he invited me in on a Friday evening. I played basketball. We've got one of the members this evening uh, is here, he's 82 I think now, John. Uh, he used to play basketball with John on a Friday night. It was 1976 I came down, there was a chap called Ali Hawkins, a fives player, and I was an apprentice at GC and Addy brought me down and I was doing a bit of running at the time and Addy was a fives player and he was also a runner and I came down and obviously I was only 17 and Addy said you fancy coming for running in the 60s mm -hmm. so we get changed you know, meet there, bit, bit, go out for a run I thought to myself 60 at this bloke I'm good for a run after about two mile I'm like this all right then this is it now I'm, I'm, I'm going and I, my fatal mistake was to put one foot forward then Ali went, right, are we going then? And that was it. And I'll tell you something, we did six mile. And after it, he came in a mile in front of me. I was breathing through my backside. And I thought, I didn't come then till the year after. <laughs> and Billy Connor brought me. And I saw Ali. Well, I knew Ali from work, and I saw Ali. But I never got involved too much with the fives. It was always the wrestling. I did judo. Uh, I came to the YM when it opened here. Uh, mainly because uh, I was sent by my coaches who were Richard Barraclough who went with uh, Joey to uh, to Munich and Steve Pullen. Uh, they were both wrestlers at the YMCA and uh, I was sent down here to, to uh, improve my groundwork by doing wrestling. And, uh, Which is what it, yeah. So you, do, you did multi-sports to, to, to uh, bolster your own sport. Talking about how you first got involved with the YMCA. Uh, well, judo, you, you've, you've got a lot of uh, alternative stuff that, to get good at judo. One of, them, one of them's alternative training, one of them's uh, wrestling. Uh, so I started doing the wrestling to help my judo. Uh, when I checked out the facilities and the weights, the weight training, weights were good. Um, swimming pool, 200 metre running track. At that time I was training full time. So uh, the facilities, I uh, really liked them. To be honest with you, you get loads of people coming here and they said, uh, I'm going to join another club and they always come back. They always come back. Because there's plenty of facilities here. You know what I mean? You can't go wrong. There's loads of things you can do. And there's Hill, you know, uh, London Road Station? Here, do you know it? Well, near it, there's a... Uh, it's called uh, Jutland Street, and it was like that. I mean, my brother had found it, well, my brother did, and we used to go up this, and then that's when I started winning the British. Because it's like when you come off the mat, when you'd done the sill ten times, you know, it was the same, you had the same feeling. And that's, uh, it done me good. And they still, they start, they still do it now, the lads. You know, after 40 years, they took in, they still do it, and we used to start it off. How often do you train now? How often do well, you come seven to Seven days a week. Now I've got more time and I've 
and sense. So I'll train seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, train seven days a week. I play. I do yoga on a Monday. Tuesday I play badminton. Wednesday I do another class. To get good at judo, you've got to go where the practices are, where the, the, the training is, and you've got to fight and train with the same guys and the same weight, you know, same standard. Thursday I go for a four mile run. Friday I do badminton. Uh, strength, weight training, you know, circuits, heavyweights, depending on what stage of the of the um, training program you're at, up to the tournament. You know, you change it from quantity to quality. Saturday morning I do four miles with one of my mates, and Sunday morning I play badminton. So I train every day. I'm lucky, really lucky. I mean, there was a lot of that sort of thing, wasn't oh, was, there? Was like these type of Spartan type trainers, oh. like these Corinthians. They, were, they, were, they, they did their own thing. There was no motivation coming from anywhere else, only out of themselves. And they would come and do these mad runs. And because when you're wrestling, if your forearms go, you've gone. And skipping, it's marvellous for your forearms, you know, it makes you strong. There used to be a, a chap, and you, I can't just remember his name, but I'm sure one somebody will sort out here. And he was a tremendous keep fit man. And he used to run up the stairs, he'd run up so many stairs, yeah. so many press ups, yeah. so, many, so many press ups. Yeah. And he was a good swimmer. Cliff Fairsbrook. Cliff Fairsbrook. And, and Cliff he, Fairsbrook. he used to get into the diving board and he'd get in the water and he put his hand on the diving board and just pull himself up and end up... Into an handstand. Yeah. And it's a good three... three end up, three end to, up into an handstand. A good three foot, this yeah. diving board yeah. above the water. So and he, had to, just, he had to yeah. get up there first. Yeah. Yeah. It took some doing to get on. Yeah, oh, it was on a quiet. Yeah. I couldn't get my leg on <laughs> <laughs> I went away, I was at to diet. Like when I went to Ireland and things like that, you couldn't, couldn't eat nothing, you know. Well, you, you just diet and you learn how to do it. But that was the worst part about wrestling, the dieting. Now that you're a veteran, is that training schedule a little easier? No, it's, that's the funny thing. When, when, the, when the, the lad said, oh, come and do, you know, come and do the veterans, I thought, I found that the training's the same. You know, the judo's the same, the weight training's the same. And, and the nerves are just as, exactly the, the same as they were, you know, 12 years ago. But when you get out to fight the guys, because uh, the, the experience they've had, you know, you, you take hold of them. You think, oh God, it's, it's, not, it's not as uh, not as hard as you think. So after after doing all the training, well, it was the, the, the tournaments were quite easy. The Saturday trainings here were, were just unbelievable, yeah, weren't they? The Saturday were. morning, you'd come yeah. down and play murder ball and yeah, yeah. get countless injuries before <laughs> you actually started <laughs> wrestling. Murder ball. It's like uh, I don't know what. Was there even a ball? Was there even a ball, no rules. There even a ball involved? Well, we just cracked into each other. Occasionally, a little <laughs> ball was involved and. <laughs> And it was a free for all, basically. And so whoever you used to play it in whoever school. got the ball, then was, you really didn't want to get the ball because you know <laughs> twenty or thirty and people would just suddenly pound. It's on like it. rugby with no rules. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I look at the wrestling. I wonder how I done it. You know, when I'm watching wrestling, you know, it's that long ago. You can't realise you used to do it. But it's a nice feeling when you, you know when you see him like when you have done it.